episode of India Connects on the Indian side. Our guest today is Naveen Kaur. She is a dietitian, nutritionist, and a lifestyle coach. She is also a social media star known for her videos on health and diet tips. But that's not what we're going to talk to her about today. Today we're going to discuss about COVID nineteen and its effect on our health and well-being. Hi, Naveen. Welcome to the show. Uh, before we start, I had a question. I saw that you're known as a people's dietitian. Can you tell us how that came about, and you know what's the story behind it? Well, there's a very short story, uh, and I think uh, I can share in a very uh, small uh, way of you know telling in two lines itself. So, just finished up with my MSc, looking for some job or looking for some internships. Worked with few of the doctors, worked in PGI, and then uh, realized the importance of health by seeing the lots of people on bed on PGI and feel like the people need some practical knowledge, not just the theoretical way of dealing with the calories and protein and carbs. And uh, then starting with a very small clinic in my at my home itself on in basement with one uh, chair and table and uh, asking women on women's day on 8th of march on women's day i just asked a few of the women to just share their uh, health problems with me uh, on just a free consultation with them and then solving their problem one uh, then sharing them with their sharing the views about the diet and health and and uh, i was really glad the people start uh, accepting the perspective towards health should be very simple so mm-hmm. they don't want a complexity of diet with the uh, lots of uh, measuring of things and you know mm-hmm. portion size and everything so that uh, acceptance of that perspective towards health is like a uh, uh, I think a uh, changing uh, role in my life, and that's what uh, I'm here by going one by one and taking experience from a lot of people. And now I'm here in front of you. Do tell us something about your uh, clinic, Diet Inside. Mm-hmm. And how did that start? When did yes, you start that? Diet Insight comes up after like uh, three, four months after when I started with my uh, clinic in basement and uh, we were looking for some name for uh, our brand, how we can, uh, you know, start with some proper naming of our uh, dietitian. Lovely should be named with some uh, uh, name with a certain brand of that. Mm-hmm. So the we, I always uh, talk about the insight of diet. It's not about just knowing a diet plan from a dietitian and knowing about uh, you have to eat this thing and not on that particular day and that's done. You should know the reason and the logic behind the things. Why are you having those meals? How you have to convince yourself so that it will be a part of your routine as a lifelong mm-hmm. lifestyle modification. And there comes the name as insight. So diet insight is all about insight about diet. You sh- why you should have it and how it can be a part of your routine on a daily basis. That's great. So tell us about the kind of cases that you are getting now from you know COVID recovered patients. Now we're looking at the third wave also. So what yes, yes. you know what kind of uh, you know uh, pa- what, what kind of things that uh, are you seeing in recovered patients? Well, there are speculation about third wave. Let's hope for the best. So in India. Uh, we, you know, we are not expecting that to be happen again. But uh, definitely, we are getting uh, so many of cases I, like a post COVID syndromes, and they are getting a, a lot of a post COVID symptoms, including hair fall, is a main concern nowadays. And yes. uh, people are no now they are more concerned about the immunity. Earlier, the people they were used to ask me what we should do for our weight, what we should do for our hypertension and diabetes, and the main normal causes. Now they are, you know, they are looking for something like a immunity. So what oh. exactly the which we need about the, for in, to boosting our immunity and the people uh, you know they have those who are being hospitalized during their COVID experience and when they are COVID survivor now they have a fear of their health that they need, should they need a good dietary routine not only for them but for your, their family also so they need uh, need to know they want to know about the antioxidant rich food anti-inflammatory rich food to boost their immunity and most importantly the people those who are undergoing the uh, lung issues lung fibrosis or they are having some breathing issues they want to know the different kind of a breathing exercises they would like to go for a certain program for a lung cleansing also because they need a specification of certain food things earlier it was like a generalized of things you just have to go for a you know a normal high protein diet a normal uh, a, a good amount of fiber in your diet now they need a specification of food item for immunity so that's what what I think is a more awareness in people after post-COVID and uh, COVID has taught us a lot of things including the immunity about the hygiene and uh, and most importantly respecting nature respecting nature's time and respecting nature's clock that's what we have learned and also our bodies I know that because I'm also a recovering COVID patient and I, I, I uh-huh. resonate with whatever you're saying I never thought you know my body would take so long to recover 
So yeah, so so going with that, what kind of diet you think should you know COVID recovery recovery patient go for? Uh, during post covid recovery your body need a good amount of a protein why because your muscle tissue has been break during the time of fever during the time of your lungs uh, injury or lung when you have a lungs issue so we need a good high protein diet but it doesn't mean that you should switch it to very high protein in a form of non vegetarian diet definitely you can have non veg you can include eggs you can include chicken but there should be a moderation of each and everything non vegetarian diet with a vegetarian sources of protein including legumes soya product milk and milk products sprouts all that good combination gives a, a balanced way of having protein otherwise high protein sometimes leads to renal issues sometimes it leads to acid issues so we need to be very careful so number one is protein number two is hydration this is very very important because your cells need a communication your cells need a some mode of uh, transferring the message from one cell to another so trillions of cells need water as a hydration we can go for lemon water coconut water if you are living in certain area where there's availability of coco sherbet or having okay. a, a different kind of infused drink that's the best to drinks to have it post covid number three uh, the most important thing is about having iron rich sources because what happen your rbc's count and your rbc cells they need a oxygen supply and that we can get it from vitamin b12 and iron so the different sources of iron which are easily uh, get it from the sources of like uh, anar having pomegranate or having sprouts or having fig prunes dates all these are good sources but sometime what we have seen that the people they are getting those uh, supplements of iron and zinc and vitamin c everything but they are having a very less absorption of all those supplements reason right. behind is the gut issues the gut is not working properly they are feeling constipated they are feeling acidic they are feeling bloated heavy flatulence all these leads to the uh, malabsorption of any of the micronutrients so first we need to work on gut first we need to work to clear the enzymes first we need to work on the bacterial formation the good probiotics in your gut so that you are able to absorb that iron content you are able to absorb that zinc and vitamin c so basically for post covid we need protein we need hydration we need micronutrients which are rich in antioxidant and anti inflammatory yeah okay um what should a normal diet chart of a covid recovery patient look like in a day you know in i don't want a very elaborate one but just give us some idea what yeah, should be three, three main meals already you know uh, indian diet or any type of individual having three meal, main meals in a day breakfast lunch and dinner and some people nowadays they are following a trend of doing a intermittent fasting also so uh, what we believe having a good proper meal three times in a day that is a requirement of your body for your good, for the good fuel and there should be a window of eating for 12 hours of eating window and 12 hours of body repairing mode so if you are having a very good lifestyle and if you are waking up by sunrise and you are switching off all your uh, gadgets before and are going to bed and you are having your meal by sunset that means you are, are having a good 12 hours of eating fuel for your body so we need three main meals breakfast lunch and dinner if according to the region you are living in according to the local availability of resources like in india it's like a normal indian khana roti sabji yeah. dal rice but now the main important thing for post covid for the recovery is a pre meal so pre meal basically includes fruits in morning mm -hmm. having some salad sticks before your lunch mm -hmm. having some protein rich items before your dinner so these three main meals and pre meals combined together to form a well balanced diet along with that a few of the hydrating drinks including some chia seed water or lemon water or coconut water or peppermint drink or lemon grass water something which gives you a little uh, good immunity uh, cell boosting power so we need three main meals and three pre meals including all type of fiber before your meal which will help to control the portion size of your main meal also that sounds good um tell us something uh, does i mean apart from immunity uh, i was talking to a doctor sometime back and he said that it also affects our hormonal balance Uh, yes, yes, and that was something, and that's because I was asking him about my hair fall problem, and mm -hmm. you know, a lot of other people have also come up with that, and he said that it was mostly because of uh, you know hormonal hormonal imbalance that's created during uh, COVID. Uh, so, yes, what should we do to? Yes, so well, I think uh, the only way to keep yourself healthy is to make your hormones happy. because everything which is working in your body is all related to your hormones uh, yeah. ranging from thyroxin hormone insulin hormone estrogen progesterone and lot of that scientific terms that's so a lot. i uh, 
Yes, easiest way to keep yourself healthy is to control over your hormones. So, uh, post COVID, if you are facing any of your hair fall or hair shedding, hair issues, that uh, you can recover up within like three months of your COVID recovery period time. But if in case that hair shedding or hair fall is because of a deficiency, because of hormonal disturbance, then we need to work on that in a uh, in in such a way that you are not only getting a nutrients from diet, but you also need to work on other aspects. Like for hormones, we need to work on our stress management because the cortisol hormone. Hormone is one of the major hormone which is affecting on your rest of the other hormones. Cortisol, if there is a high spike of cortisol, stress hormone leading affecting on the insulin resistance, ultimately affecting on a diabetic level, and that also leads to hair hair loss uh, one another way. And uh, we have seen a lot of cases in our clinic. the people those who are able to control their cortisol hormone along with that they are doing daily exercise routine they are doing the deep breathing exercises if they are you know sleeping well they are repairing their body they are able to manage their hormonal issues and uh, few of the uh, some of the girls those who are uh, facing the pcod issues also they are they are able to correct their hormonal problems not only with diet but also with the other holistic approach including exercise on a daily basis with yoga routine having good amount of water and switching off the gadgets before going to bed having good sleep and uh, you know and also exactly like a mental hygiene so it's a, just a good combination of each and everything to just making your hormones on a good way okay. we need to work on our hormones actually yeah. yes so another thing i know uh, i uh, learned from the doctor was a lot of people who also getting thyroid issues because of hormones uh, men also so yes. that that's how so you know you suggest the same uh, way for this uh uh-huh. uh in case of thyroid issue male and female both have a different requirements what i believe because mostly in women level the thyroid is related to cortisol hormone which we have uh, seen in lot of cases but at the male level uh it, it not exactly a cortisol hormone let's definitely 80% cases are cortisol hormone but 20% are related to um, could be like a iodine deficiency could be like a genetical issues could be like a lifestyle issues also so uh, if we are working on the women level we also need to work on a period cycle because thyroid also leads to effect on the period cycle and the irregularity of a period and we need to work on that at the male level it is totally different because then only we need to work on a lifestyle changes because in their condition could be like a lifestyle problem they are more sedentary they are sitting for long hours not no any move there is no movement and ultimately affecting on your liver and uh, the sluggishness of liver leads to thyroid issues. in male so cleansing the liver is one of the easiest aspect for the thyroid condition to resolve the thyroid condition to reverse it and also uh, working on your cortisol hormone working on your iodine deficiencies and uh, most importantly it is all related to your daily uh, you know lifestyle issues so exactly what we need to work on these things okay. um also another thing that's come up after covid or uh, is that you know senior citizens uh mm-hmm. they need a lot of lot more time to rehabilitate when they come back from hospitals or even if they go to the hospitals uh you know even if they are coming from mild bouts of covid they take a lot of time so what kind of diet would you suggest for elderly people senior citizens uh, who are recovering from covid Yes. elderly people i think this is the most uh, difficult category of people to deal with because their habits are you know so stuck in and stubborn and they are not ready to change uh we have a lot of cases those who are 50 or 60 more than 60 years of age we always say please don't have tea in morning that's not good for you you need a good uh, you know start of the day switch to a normal having a fruit and a and you start you should start your day with fruits or some nuts but uh, the main problem which we have faced with the elderly people is their uh, habits uh, to change their habits in a, from yeah. stubborn to a normal way of dealing with their life so Uh, when we uh, for the elderly people we need to work de- uh, it's a similar kind of strategy uh, strategy dealing with the elderly g- giving a good amount of protein having good uh, giving them hydration but along with that this is a stage when their muscle tissues are being breaking up every day there is no growth hormone working properly so we need to work on certain thing which help to build up the muscle tissue so as per uh, because once a person is on the aging mode the insulin level they are, that has not been maintained and we need to work on every aspect because they are they are taking lots of medications diabetes and high and acids and tons of those things so right. it is like a therapeutic case where we have to consider the each and every aspect personalized way of dealing with them if they are on a blood thinner we have to take care that they should not be on any type of other blood thinning items like green leafy vegetables or having green teas or apple cider vinegar so we need to uh, be very careful on the personal level but in generalized form if the elderly people they would like to regain their health you know on the post covid level so they should be very careful about the intake of protein before their meal for example if they are going to have their 
breakfast they should have some nuts and seeds in morning before their lunch they can have some sprouts uh, salad before their dinner also they can have some paneer or cottage cheese so depends from person to person some people they don't have a good, very good appetite at the age of 60s or 70s so they right. just need two meals in a day and just two uh, servings of fiber in a day so that also depends on their physical activity if they are not very physically active and they are not going for a walk they are not doing any activity so obviously obviously the portion size of the meal and the content of the meal will be very less only two meals in a day or maybe like having two fiber meals in a day um uh, that reminds me of another very hot question elderly people are now you know scared of going out for walks also yes. so what kind of exercises can they do at home because yoga is also not you know uh, very feasible for many of them because they have joint problems and recovering patients anyways have uh, you know a lot of joint pains and other issues so what kind of exercises can they do at home uh well uh, for uh, elderly people we always suggest to uh, spend 30 minutes on their self and divide it into three parts number one is just doing a stretching stretching mm-hmm. is not about that have to stretch very uh, you know uh, in a very high intensity level it's just a stretching of their legs and moving their wrist or moving their neck or an all type of like a normal physio movements okay. so that's the number one part number two is related to the breathing exercises because that is the easiest way to keep their lungs healthy and when okay. they are sitting uh, in a, like doing some kapalabhati pranayama that is the best way for controlling their mental emotions also and also for their physical well being and for their lungs uh, lungs uh, health also so that's a breathing part. and number 3 is all about movement full day so they should not sit for long hours and keep moving after every 30 to 40 minutes or after like 15 minutes they should not be feel themselves as a more sedentary or feel like they are you know they are having a, a knees issues and not able to move much they should make up their mind that they, uh, the body needs movement for the blood oh. circulation if they have a lot of stiffness that can only be removed if you are moving if they are having vitamin d supplements if they are having calcium supplements that can only be absorbed if they are moving if they are not moving that means the vitamin d and calcium whatever they are having that leads to kidney stones also mm. so they should be very active keep doing the breathing exercises and stretch their body in morning okay. um another group of people who were not affected you know who have not been affected till now but are in uh, you know the red red alert category are the kids and there's yeah. like many states in india are opening schools also uh, till now so uh, how can we keep our kids healthy so that even if they get covid which probably all of us will in at in some point of time or the other how can we keep them healthy so that you know they don't uh, they don't they don't feel the you know the, the effects so much yes so most important is the following the covid appropriate behavior for kids definitely right. you already know how to wear mask and washing hands and hygiene and everything that's the number one step and number two is now is a time to uh, get ready for the war it is like a war which is coming up for the kids also so for that we need to be careful about the precautions like uh, including uh, their immunity boosting uh, routine so now the kids are eating according to their family eating pattern if the family is following a immunity boosting dietary routine obviously the kids are going to have a similar pattern again so uh, basically the family the parents they should be aware about the healthy eating they should make a you know make a routine at home not to get any of the packaged or man made processed mm-hmm. product wala things at home like a biscuit namkeen grass cookies which leads to effect ultimately effects on their immunity level so right. they have to stop on stuff at home and along with that except having those uh, three main meals that i already mentioned we need to focus on the intake of fruits intake of their vegetable intakes and most of the kids are picky eater they don't oh. like to have that vegetables and fruit at, at one true. go so lots of recipes and lots of you know presenting the uh, food in such a way that they start enjoying their fruit uh, foods like having some beetroot ka paratha or uh, having some that ghee ki kheer and that's oh. uh, and having that pumpkin seeds in the morning with oh. coconut slices that's a good combination for kids to boost their immunity also and enjoy their food so that mm. is the one of the part the parents need to work on and along with that if they are not able to go out for doing any of the sports activity because of the covid condition so at least doing any of the activity at home including yoga for them that's the best thing mm. and if, if the kids are not interested in doing yoga just doing a skipping at home or doing some uh, jumping jacks or doing some squats with them or like a four or five types of any mat exercises uh, parents and kids can in, indulge themselves and that helps to boost their immunity also so it's all about their good sleeping pattern because most of the kids they are attending the online classes and they are sitting late at night and using the gadgets a blue light right. that also affects 
community. So they need to work on the sleeping as early as possible without using any gadgets and sharing their feelings with their parents if they are having any type of insecurity. So they need to share with, the, with their parents and with their family and having a good healthy food at home itself, hydrating their body and uh, most importantly their yoga routine or any type of physical activity. So the last question then before we wrap up, uh, Lovely, what tips would you give to people now that you know the third wave is uh, almost upon us? What tips would you give people apart from you know healthy eating? What kind of exercises should we you know uh, add to our daily routine, and uh, what else can we do to stay healthy so that you know even if we get it, it, it isn't so bad. And not really people, and also, also, uh, you know, a lot of people already have uh, health issues, like you said. Not only elderly people, but even younger people now have issues with their kidneys, with their fatty liver, because everybody has been living at home for about a year now, more than a year now, and they're not yes. doing much of activity. So, what should people do now to you know gear up for and 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 stay yes. stay safe? I mean, staying safe is obviously. Uh, a thing but you know what else can we do because i know a lot of people who stayed at home and still got covid you know the entire yeah. families got covid although they were staying at home mm -hmm. yes so we have seen a lot of cases that the even the 25 years of uh, young people they are getting heart attacks and even right. and there are a lot of other cases related to the kidney issues and CKD issues in very uh, uh, very uh, young age and not only this I'm um, seeing a lot of cases nowadays type one diabetic uh, at the age of five or at the age of ten years okay. so this these all sometimes these all are autoimmune disorder that means your immune cells are attacking their own organ so what okay. exactly is happening in the society what is happening in our uh, daily routine that we are catching such type of autoimmune disorders. So the reason behind it is that we are taking our health in a very complex way. We are taking it as ki, what type of a diet we should follow so that we should we keep ourselves healthy. But there is no magic. There is no secret behind following any type of a dietary routine. It's all about understanding your body system and listening to your body gut. Every day your body gives you a small symptom, small uh, indication and knock you that at what time you should eat. But if you are ignoring that symptoms and you're just concentrating on your work and feeling like a big, uh, you know I don't have a time to have that drink or I don't have a time to have my meal that means you are just taking your health as granted so it is all about consciousness if you're conscious about your health you will take out some time and grab some fruits or vegetables in between your meals if you are conscious about your health you will take out some time and make up your mind to do some activity in morning because it is like a brushing your teeth if you are brushing your teeth every day similarly you should take out some time for your stretching for your mat exercises for your breathing because that is your body's requirement your body is like a temple and if your temple your god is not uh, you know taking care of obviously your body will give you a lot of side effects a lot of uh, reactions towards it and every time if you blame your uh, your body ki mujhe to ye ho jata hai, that's not because ki your body is like any type of genetical issues not it's only one person that you're genetically your body respond but 99 percent is all because of your lifestyle issues and this the lifestyle is all mind game if your mind is ready to do anything it is you know if you are convincing your mind if you are it's not about controlling also it's all about when you are giving up messages and program programming your mind that this is something as a placebo this is something for my heart this is something for my uh, blood pressure this is something for my kidneys so that means you are getting that giving a messages to your brain that you have to do some exercise you have to eat these things just because this is healthy for your body mm -hmm. so we need to be very conscious we need to make up our mind towards it and uh, we have seen a lot of cases they started with the things with a lot of motivation they've seen some influencing people and you know they are listening some video mm -hmm. and they start their journey with them and um, uh, and on their own pace also but for a few days they feel motivated after like a seven days or 11th day they feel demotivated that means that is just for a short duration you are not you are not read, uh, giving a message to your body this is not a game of short duration of doing it for 21 days or 30 days or maybe like for three months this is for lifelong and the things which you want to adapt it for lifelong you have to perform it one person every day so don't expect your body to do everything in one day 100 percent just move it with one person every day so that you are getting a motivation every day at least I am able to do this much one person every day I'm able to achieve it within a year or so that motivation help you to lead it for a long time and long journey for them and the people those who are living at home and they uh, they are you know at the COVID situation under lockdown they are more of introvert now it's because it's not uh, we are on not only a show, uh, physical distancing it's a social distancing that we are right. communicating 
uh, just the you know about this uh, video calls and everything and that is also good more definitely that's a positive aspect but the physical uh, touch the physical hugs the physical vibrations yeah. also that have a different aspect different uh, feeling to us so in order to achieve that first of all we have to make up our mind that the time is not far away and the time never remains same so let's hope for the best in the coming future when we are going to hug each other so the present situation we have to be get ready uh, ready with the self with a good health with a good smile on our face so that whenever we're going to face each other in a in a present situation and in a future it like you are looking so healthy now but i mean before covid you were you were looking so weak and you were so you have a lot of fear towards food but now you're looking so healthy that's what we need to work towards it so i think it's all about a mind perspective it's all about a state of mind if you have a state of mind uh, to towards your good health definitely going to achieve and if you feel like i can't do it for one day i can do it for two days and third day you feel demotivated so it's just yeah. in your mind yeah and but the last question is a uh, lot of people are taking supplements you know because they feel uh, or they, they think that supplements will help them boost up their energy instead of eating food do you think ha- having supplements is a good idea like vitamin c e other supplements without and sometimes they are taking it without the doctors uh, you know yeah, prescription yeah. they just did yeah they just talking to friends and they said acha ye bhi le lo so they take that and also you know some of them are take, many people are taking uh, so called ayurvedic supplements now mm-hmm. i have read a lot of uh, in a lot of uh, places that those are leading to kidney uh, dysfunctions and stuff like that so so would you like to talk about that also Uh, what i believe that the nature has already given us a lot of things in a supplemented form nature is a form of supplement in itself why because nature has given you supplemented form of fruits and vegetables and giving you nuts and seeds and grains cereals pulses everything is a type of a good nourishment for food uh, for for you but in case if you are not able to fulfill that for a situation for example if you are under covid situation your body is not able to eat much your body is not demanding that that appetite is not allowing you to have that citrus food for vitamin c you are you are not feeling comfortable with having chewing of those food then definitely you need a supplementation then, you then your doctor c- and then your doctor would also do that but yes, i am talking about people who are doing self medication i am talking yes. about them and that's so, Yes, those who are doing self-medication, they are risk, uh, they are taking risk with their life on their own pace because they should understand this thing. A person who or uh, who are expert, who is qualified uh, by uh, giving you any type of supplementation uh, recommendation, definitely they will tell you according to your body requirement. And, right. and we have seen a lot of people who are taking whey protein without any recommendation, and they are uh, having their post workout in a very large amount that affects on their kidney also. So mm-hmm. you need to understand your body system if your renal profile is perfectly going well and if you are doing high intensity. the workouts also so in that condition you need those type of supplements otherwise the different kinds of uh, on the counter available supplements like vitamin c zinc selenium that can only be prescribed if your body demands if your body needs a plus supplementation requirement according to your present situation but if you are under the normal situation and you able to have your normal well balanced diet so i don't believe that we need those marketing products and you know a lot of supplementation of things which are available nowadays Thanks, Lavdeen. That was a lot of help. I'm sure it's going to help a lot of people, and uh, uh, we hope to see you again, probably. Uh, yes. Thanks so much. Thanks Thank so, so much. Pleasure being here. Thank you so much, Suma.